Gold's recent price rally has been remarkable, and it is leading the way for silver to follow. Firstly, in its recent speed and extent of climb, gold has jumped up by over 20% within the last two months, trough to today's intraday price peak, briefly clearing 2,430 an ounce. Other than a long rally into its August 2011 peak, gold has not seen such an aggressive price increase over such a short time frame in many years and even more than a decade. More on that in a full fiat currency era context later in this week's SD Bullion market update. Gold has been defiant of traditional fiat financialized correlations, leaving many with green colored goggles confused. Recently, rising real yields should cut its price. Whatever. Rising DXY or relative fiat US dollar strength of late? Not phased. Policy interest rate expectations have actually increased and only a few Fed cuts are supposed to be happening this year. Yet gold's rising spot price doesn't seem to care at all either. Unsecured ETF outflows for years in the West. While the East will take those underlying bullion bar outflows, often passing through Swiss major gold refiners, thank you very much. All this is happening while simultaneously COMEX warehouse raids for bullion bars continues on. And so global gold market trends and pricing dynamics are shifting in real time, and it's being reflected right in the spot price day to day. Case in point, the alleged precious metals price analysts the City of London agents like to publish on an annual basis. Every one of their fiat US dollar gold price high guesses for the year 2024 have already been surpassed. And yeah, it's only April 12th, 2024. We're in new nominal price high territory now for gold. You know what that means? The Western momentum longs are piling in and the leveraged longs via derivative trade is coming and it's going to be consistently winning for years to come. So let's check in on some mainstream coverage of gold this week as people try to figure out the myriad dynamics at play. Here with more on the recent rally in gold, the stocks to watch, Chris Mancini, Associate Portfolio Manager of the Gabelli Gold Fund. Uh, Chris, we're seeing noticeable outflows in gold-backed ETFs. So what's driving the price higher? Right, well, that's a great question. So given these outflows in the ETFs, normally what we see is the price of gold fluctuates very closely with flows into and out of ETFs because um, the ETFs are the marginal buyer or seller of gold. And what we've seen now is gold's gone up, notwithstanding these outflows that you mentioned. So what that points to is there must be physical buyers of gold that we aren't able to see. We don't know where they're coming from. We know specifically that um, central banks are buying. So China has bought, uh, but they have bought consistently over the last few months or last actually year and a half. Um, but we don't know exactly where the other uh, physical buyers are coming from. So it could be high net worth individuals. It could be Chinese retail, but there is some good momentum behind it. You, you say physical buyers, but you mean physical gold people are buying. I mean, we exactly. saw the, the headlines about Costco doing all this business, mm -hmm. selling exactly. gold bars. Is this yeah. what you mean? Like yeah, people so, are going so things like that. Exactly. So Costco, we know, is selling lots of physical gold. It could be, again, high net worth Americans, Chinese, you know, buying physical gold, putting it in a vault. What does the demand say to you? In other words, why are people doing this? Whether it's a central bank or an individual or a family office? I mean, for what, what is it expressing? Central banks, what we know is that um, when Russia invaded Ukraine, the United States and European governments essentially confiscated Russians' uh, foreign exchange reserves, around $500 billion. And so China has $3 trillion of foreign exchange reserves. Um, they don't want that to be confiscated. So they're diversifying out of dollars and into gold. And other central banks around the world are doing that as well, because gold, you know, obviously cannot be digitally seized or confiscated like U.S. Treasuries or. or so they're taking dollars yeah. and selling dollars and buying physical gold and storing it because exactly. you can't get to my vault. Exactly. Exactly. You can freeze it. my account. Exactly. You can you can do whatever you want through the banking system, but you can't come get my... Exactly. That's a, so that's a huge trend that's going on globally uh, amongst, amongst global central banks. So that's one big driver of the gold price. The other might be that, you know, uh, that individuals in China, for example, are seeing a faltering real estate market. That's where they've held their savings. Now they're saying, OK, real estate's going down. What we want to do is diversify into something that's a hard asset that we can store and hold for a very long time, hand to our grandchildren, something like that, um, and, and sock it away. So they're buying physical gold. Some decent broad strokes, even while being surrounded by cartoon pictures of what looked like 400-ounce gold bar depictions. 
Yet it states a thousand grams on each bar, which is only one kilo of gold. So the cartoon bar should be more like the size of a modern smartphone instead. We'll get into a real life example of a common error in bullion weights and measures later on in this bullion market update. Some of you might be pulling out your silver bullion bars upon learning this news to perhaps weigh in and ensure that you didn't get swindled by this apparent incompetence. Now moving on to the supposedly trusted CBS news source and a few amateur hour gold market takes. Gold is having a moment. The buying price of gold futures has hit multiple record highs this year. Since January 2nd, it's risen more than 14 percent in value. That's more than the Dow Jones, Nasdaq and S&P 500, which have also hit record highs. Gold has historically been viewed as a safe investment because for centuries people have treated it with intrinsic worth, less influenced by the passions of the moment. The last times it peaked were following the 2007 to 2009 financial crisis and after the onset of COVID-19. But gold's current rally is happening without a recession or a pandemic, and inflation and interest rates are both expected to fall. So what is behind the gold rally? Here to explain is Campbell Harvey. He's a professor of finance at Duke University and co-author with Claude Erb of The Golden Dilemma. Thank you so much for being with us. Who's buying the gold? So it's very interesting. Uh, you would think that retail investors are piling into gold. And the usual way that you would invest in gold is to buy uh, an ETF. But that's not really the case. If you look over the last 10 months, uh, there have been like negative flows or outflows from the gold ETFs. Uh, and actually an increase in uh, the Bitcoin uh, ETFs. So this is, in my opinion, mainly institutional investors like hedge funds uh, that are speculating on the price of gold. As you mentioned, uh, gold has done well over the last quarter, but over the last year, it's lagged the S&P in spectacular investments like NVIDIA and, uh, and, and others. So I do think that uh, people saw gold as lagging and the institutional investors are piling in. Now, Professor, can you help us uh, remember or maybe even learn it for the first time what an ETF is? Yeah, so an ETF, like to buy gold um, is, is complicated. So yes, you can go to a store like Costco and buy like a small gold bar, but it's uh, you know, an issue in terms of uh, the security of that gold. So to actually hold gold at your house is, uh, is risky and it's costly to warehouse it in general. So instead, what people generally do is to buy uh, an exchange traded fund, which wow. is like a cheap version of a mutual fund. And you buy a share of that and the fund actually warehouses the gold for you. Ah, okay, so it's a note saying somewhere off You've got some bar of gold that's got your name on it or a sliver of that bar of gold. I know, right? Shareholders in gold ETFs own nothing but a derivative of price while paying annual management fees for the pleasure of underperforming bullion bid premiums to come. And no, buying and selling bullion is not hard. We're not helpless toddlers. Stop treating your viewers like so. But it gets worse. You see, for the past few years, CBS News has been regularly renting out its trusted brand name to some of the alleged greasiest worst actors in the precious metals industry. Uh, the articles that they've been posting on CBS News are designed to help generate leads for these greasy actors so they can upsell and rip off typically unsuspecting elderly CBS News online article readers. And this has been going on for years. Case in point, this is an example from this week. CBS News gets consistently paid to advertise via 8th grade level general gold insight articles that are published almost daily by many of some of industry's most embarrassing dealers who are actively looking for novice leads to take advantage of. Uh, these dealers often sociopathic aims is to push would be low premium bullion bar and coin buyers into often overpriced odd weight quote exclusive bullion coins that often get marked up plus 50% or more over their melt values. Both many elderly and global people are getting their IRAs taken for huge rides, sending the victims to the retirement poorhouse, all while CBS News apparently has no qualms being paid to take part in this ongoing industry abhorrence. 
I'm not sure if or when the class action lawsuits will kick into high gear, but my bet is they'll be coming in waves aimed at both greasy dealers and even CBS News itself in the coming years, as investors increasingly realize they've been collectively built by such practices. Stick around, we're going to go through what the crazy price volatility we witnessed in spot gold and silver prices today means in a longer term view of where we're likely trending. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these bullion market updates. And be sure to visit sdbullion.com forward slash sweepstakes to enter our free 500 ounce silver coin giveaway. Want to win 500 Silver Tree of Life coins from SD Bullion? Enter and you could be the next lucky receiver of a phone call like this. Hello. Hi, Stuart. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, president and founder of SD Bullion. And I'm calling you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a monster box of 2023 Silver Eagles. Oh, my God. <laughs> you got to tell my wife this, because she's not going to believe it. Honey? Yes. Okay, doctor, let her know. Yeah, this is Dr. Tyler Wall. I just let you know that you guys won the Munster Box of 2023 Silver Eagles giveaway from SD Bullion. No way. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> she would never believe me if I told her that I'm online all day long with your website looking for deals. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, your site's fabulous and your company's fabulous. Well, I appreciate that feedback. And uh, we'll be following up with you shortly on getting your Munster Box shipped to you. Congratulations again. Thank you, doctor. So click the link below because the next big winner could be you. The spot gold price blew through 2,430 an ounce intraday today with a large sell-off to follow, cutting over $80 an ounce in price before the week's trading finished. The spot gold price still finished higher overall on the week at 2,350 an ounce ask. The spot silver price briefly threatened 30 an ounce today only to have similar sell-off to finish the week slightly up near the key $28 per ounce level. The spot gold silver ratio fell slightly to finish just below 84 on the week. Now to induce that sell-off to end today in gold and silver spot prices required massive volumes of derivative trading, some of the largest volumes we've seen in some time for both precious metals in the derivatives complex. But the picture for the bullion bull market mania with gold leading it is looking like so. This latest rapid upswing in gold prices relative to its now 200 day moving average, now above 2000 an ounce, suggests to me that we are now moving into a fourth gold bull box phase, if you will, on this chart. Of course, on this chart, you only see three bull box gold phases, two of which were in the 1970s bull market and another wrapped around the 2008 global financial crisis and 2011 high price achieved back when U.S. debt got downgraded for the first time. Now we're looking down the barrel of a U.S. bond bear market for years and perhaps decades to come. As the world is going for bullion over bonds and avoiding counterparty risk-laden bubble asset classes, gold record nominal price climb, I think, is just getting underway. And turning to silver, yeah, the $28 to $30 an ounce level is a major congestion zone. So the inevitable eventual leaving of these spot price levels behind, that's coming. Maybe not next week or even the next months, but this year, I'll take that bet. And I'll leave that bet on the table throughout this decade without even blinking an eye. Remember the last time the silver spot price got tamped down when it threatened to leave 30 an ounce resistance and make a run in early 2021? Yeah, well this time the spot gold silver ratio is threatening to break through this technical upswing it's built ever since. It was threatening to break it today when it dipped to 81. How much longer do you think this is going to hold technically? And when it finally falls and runs through 30 and into the 40 an ounce level, it's likely going to be a lot stronger than it was in 2011. This time we have a launch pad base we built and exceptional market fundamentals that are driving us forward. Now, as promised, a quick polite warning for bullion stackers out there. We ran into dealer on dealers complaining about a five troy ounce bullion bar that were apparently manufactured with someone using the wrong weights and measures. If you have bullion bars by this manufacturer, you might want to double check them and make sure you got what you think you paid for using perhaps a digital scale. People make this mistake often in the scrap gold market on the retail level for sure and they get taken for a ride given their lack of knowledge between an ounce and a troy ounce or grams etc. But if you are thinking about minting your own bullion products, maybe come to our website and learn the difference between a common ounce versus a troy ounce before you make the same mistake. 
Let's move on to Indian coverage of the silver market and the incredible fundamentals that are building for it with a few highlights from Manisha Gupta's recent interview with Michael DiRienzo of the Silver Institute this week. Michael, hi, thank you so much for joining in. We just had a big conversation on gold where the expectations are that the prices will continue to stay heightened. Well, of course, there would be a correction, but the prices will come back to where they're trading right now. What's your sense on silver from here on? Because while the international markets are trading at a three-year highs, for the Indian markets, we're at an all-time high with the projections coming in that we are going higher from here as well. Um, it, without a doubt, it's been a great run for silver this year. Uh, we had a 7% increase in the price um, in 2023, and we're already up 16% um, so far through the first quarter and as of April 3rd uh, 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 for this year. So it's strong. There's strong buying. Uh, there's really strong interest in the ETFs and ETPs, and um, that's helping to support the silver price. But you know, silver, as we all know, is a dual metal. It's both a store of value and uh, a hedge against inflation and and uh, uh, a hard asset. But it's also an industrial metal. And a lot of people are making the industrial play for silver as we continue to set record after record after record with respect to industrial demand. We're putting out our World Silver Survey next to, uh, Wednesday. And uh, I think you're going to see some great numbers there for 2023, especially when it comes to industrial demand. Mm. Any sense on a percentage increase that we've been looking at in sense of silver, Michael? We'll wait for that report, of course, but any indication? Well, look, at it, it, it's going to be strong. We've hit record in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Um, there'll be another record for uh, uh, silver industrial demand. I don't want to front run that um, before we make our announcement next week. But it's safe to say that we're on a pattern here. We're on a glide path where silver is being consumed in so many industries and so many applications that the industrial side for silver is really shooting, shooting to the moon. And one of the reasons is, of course, is the global energy transition and silver's use in photovoltaics. Um, I can say Last year was a record year for that. Um, and this year is going to be equally as strong. Um, silver's use in uh, um, electric, the electrification of vehicles and charging stations um, and so forth throughout the globe. That's adding to the overall demand increase. And down the road, let's look at AI. Where is silver play in, in, um, in AI? So we discuss that in next week's uh, World Silver Survey which will be available online on, on Wednesday morning for everybody. <laughs> All right, Michael, we will watch out for that. I also want to talk about the global uh, demand and supply. And we do know that we've been working on a deficit since 2018, and that perhaps will not change in 2024 also. That's absolutely correct. We project another deficit. It will be the fourth consecutive deficit um, in the silver market. And uh, we're actually uh, calling for a decrease um, in overall supply uh, this year. And that will come off of um, a decrease last year as well. So the deficits continue. Um, we believe that next year's or this year's deficit will be one of the strongest or largest deficits we've had within the last four years. Mm. Michael, when we talk about precious metals, well, yes, recycling and exchange is a big market when it comes to gold, not such a huge market when it comes to silver though. No, it only represents about 18% of the market in 2023. Mm. Um, the recycling side for silver is a lot more difficult than it is for gold. It used to be very predominant um, when, 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 when photography uh, was a mainstay with respect to silver's use in industrial applications. But today it's just more difficult. I mean, um, it's hard, silver's smaller. Uh, it's hard to get into the components of a, some of these technical. Uh, technologies that we're using, computers, cell phones, and so forth. So it's just it's just really, really, really difficult. Michael, there are various reports suggesting that silver will outperform gold in the next 6 to 12 months, while India, as you said, would be a strong buyer. How are you looking at various other geographies? Well, we've got some catching up to do with respect to gold, right? I mean, gold is having a fantastic six months or over a year, and they really started off on fire in uh, 2024, but the gold and silver ratio is decreasing even as we speak. It's about 85, 86 right now. Mm. But you know, last year it was above 92, 93. So the number of ounces it takes to buy one ounce of, of gold, that number is shrinking. We think silver is gonna have an exceptional year. 
We called for that back in January. We'll highlight that again next week. And throughout the year, we'll keep on focusing on what silver is to the average individual across the world, its importance in the in the global energy transition, and what a great store of value uh, it is for people to own silver. Both technically, fundamentally, and macroeconomically, silver might be the best combination, momentum, and longer term trade in the entire financial market at the moment. Now, I hope by now, that you've positioned yourself well and prudently in physical bullion. Get ready to see the momentum pile on for silver to come once this 30 and ounce ceiling becomes the floor for the next fast climbs that follow. This is going to be all for this week's SD Bullion Market Update. As always to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and share it with those you love. Subscribe to our channel and hit that alert button so you know when we publish new bullion market updates.